Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the United Summer Podcast. We are in, a tr- in for a treat because we have back on the podcast by popular demand favorite person to ever walk this planet besides the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We've got on the pod today, Haley Ruland is back, everybody. I'm back. She's back. (laughs) It is great to have you here back on the podcast. And uh, we're just going to dive into it because it's just me and Haley. We don't have any high school students here on the podcast. And the truth is we were going to do a podcast on dating. We were. Is what we were going to do. But then we were thinking about it, and we were talking about it, and we were thinking about how many resources at United we've already put out on dating. I've done two whole sermon series that are up on YouTube. We've got a match made in heaven that you can go and watch, and then we've also got a sermon series called A Happily Ever After Mm -hmm. that you can go and watch on our YouTube page. And then even from Happily Ever After, our most recent sermon series that we did, I wrote a whole booklet that's meant to be gone through with your small group or a small group leader Mm -hmm. that people are still even to this day going through. I just heard about a small group that just recently went through it as a group and met together to talk about it. And so we'll put the links in the description of this video to those sermon series. And if you want one of those booklets because dating is a thought on your mind and you want to know how to think about it, what God's word has to say about it, you can come to United. You could ask for one of those booklets. Mm It'd be a great idea for you to go through it with your small group leader. But because of all those resources that we've put together, we began thinking about what it feels like we really need at the United right now and what podcast would be most helpful And so today, we're going to talk about how Christian young men can be friends with Christian young women and vice versa. And we're going to talk about two lost characteristics among youth today, the biblical virtues of prudence and discretion. Yes. And here's why we think this is such an important and needed topic that we're going to do this podcast on it, is because we sincerely want United to be a place where guys and girls, young men and young women, can be friends with each other in a way that is totally not weird, in a way that feels so right, so pure, mm. and we don't always feel like people know how to do that. In particular, it feels like one of the things that we see is we see a lot of lack of thought or consideration about things that are being said or even ways that people are acting around each other that might even come across flirtatious or unclear how someone feels about Mm -hmm. someone. And what ends up happening, just a really realistic thing that happens a lot, is we talk to people all the time who were friends with someone, but then because of the way that one person was acting, feelings were developed and it became Mm -hmm. unclear what this friendship really was. Mm -hmm. And someone communicated those feelings and then it became clear that both people didn't feel the same way. And then that friendship is broken, drama breaks out, and there might even, in some cases, be a sense of division Mm -hmm. in the United, all because there was a lack of of thought or consideration about actions and words that were said. And that is a lack of prudence and discretion. So this feels like such a needed topic. We wanted to provide some wisdom from God's word. So you looked up some definitions on these two words. Do you want to kind of even help us think about what do prudence and discretion mean? Because I was talking with some people just recently about this word prudence and when I ask people, hey, what do you think this means? The first thing that multiple people said to me is they thought, oh, is, is prudent like a dried grape? <laughs> that is what they what? thought when they heard the word prudent. <laughs> so why don't you help us? Like a prune? Like a prune. Why don't you help us? What do these two words mean? These are some lost words, but I think that they are. They sound archaic. They do, but they are very biblical words. They are used all throughout the Bible, specifically Proverbs, which we'll be talking about. Um, So this is not just Little House on the Prairie. This (laughs) is God's Word. Yes, totally. If you read the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, you will read these words over and over again. And I looked up the definitions of both 
prudent and discretion, prudence and discretion, and they are synonyms. They are very, they can be used interchangeably. And I actually found a great definition that I think kind of brings it all together. And this is actually something that C.S. Lewis said in his book, Mere Christianity. He says, prudence means practical common sense, taking the trouble to think out what you are doing and is and what is likely to come of it. Mm. And I think that's such a great definition. And, you know, I think we like to think that we think out what we are doing, but the reality is I think there's so many things that we do without thought, Mm -hmm. without a care, Mm -hmm. without just a second glance at it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I think, you know, when we're on this topic, um, I think that happens a lot between people, Mm -hmm. how we act around people, you know, whether we just feel comfortable and I just am being me or whatever it is, right? There's just a lack of thought that comes to what I say or how I act. Um, and now this doesn't, this is not saying go and like put on a mask and be, you know, a different person. This is just saying, Hey, we need to give some forethought, some, some real, um, consideration to how do I act? How do I think, how do I, uh, yeah, I mean, it really comes down to how I think, right? How do I think I should be living, behaving, talking to, um, right? Other, other people. And in this context, we're talking about brothers and sisters in Christ in the church, right? What does that look like? Um, and I love that, right? Am I, am I taking the trouble to think out what I'm doing and what is likely to come of it? Cause I think often there's just a lack of thought And therefore, then what comes of the lack of thought is what you were describing is, right, someone else has feelings or there's this drama that takes place or whatever it is. Most people don't think before they speak. Correct. Most people don't think before they act. Yes. Most people don't think before they touch. Totally. Guys, girls touching each other, hugging each other in a way where... Hey, there might not necessarily be things wrong about that in some situations and settings. Yes. But do you think about what you're doing and how it might impact someone? Yes. Or, I mean, even in our culture, there's this popular phrase, leading people on. Mm -hmm. And I know we never think we're leading someone on. Right. So often things that we say or do or ways that we behave around each other can, in this example, lead somebody on. Yes. And I think sometimes that comes with just a lack of of thinking or being wise or even being naive a little bit to how I act or what I say does affect another person a lot, that it does have an impact along those lines. When I act like I can just be comfortable or how I'm acting isn't a big deal, that's so far from the truth. But I think that's important. Let's touch on that for a second before we read all these verses. I think it's important to address that some people think if I become a prude, yes, if I become a prudent word. person, uh-huh. if I have discretion, well, then I'm not going to have any friends and people aren't going to like me because oh, I'm going to be so cautious and am I ever going to be able to develop relationships with people and oh, well, then I'm just going to be this fuddy-duddy and I'll just say, I won't speak for myself because it'd be weird for me to say anything about myself, but I will say about you, you are the most prudent person I know You're very clear with your thoughts, your intentions, your actions. And at the same time, you're one of the coolest people that I know. Whoa. And I think those two things don't have to compete with each other. Yeah. You can have great friendships with guys and girls and still be prudent. Mm -hmm. And you need to be. So let me read a bunch of these verses because the Bible has a lot to say on these two virtues, specifically found in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these verses will kind of frame up our discussion on this topic. Let's just begin in Proverbs chapter one. In verse one, it says the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. He gives these Proverbs, verse two, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. And then verse four, to give prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion Mm -hmm. to the youth. So the Bible is very clear in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs was written and given for the sake of us having prudence and discretion. 
That's what so much of Proverbs yeah. is all about. And even it's for the youth, which I love that, right? It's for the youth. That's who we're talking to. Yep. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 22, which is, I know is a verse that you're going to want to come back and talk about in just a couple of minutes. It says, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. So here is a warning against living in a kind of a way where you don't have discretion, and we need to think through what that verse actually means and what it's talking about. But then in Proverbs 13, verse 16, it says, Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. And that verse is so clear. Mm. Hey, if I'm going to be prudent, I need to act with knowledge. I need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing and how what I'm doing could lead to yes. so many different things. And then even the opposite, a fool flaunts his folly. Oh, who cares? Right? What's the big deal? I didn't mean it. I'm just being me. I'm just being me. Well, they know what I mean. Yeah. They know how I feel. That's a fool. They, they're flaunting their folly. Proverbs 14 verse 8 says, The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, to think about his way, to choose his way carefully. But the folly of fools is deceiving. Proverbs 14 verse 15. Such a great verse. I love mm -hmm. this one. A simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm not going to believe everything. I'm not just going to do whatever I feel. I'm going to think through why I'm doing what I'm doing. Proverbs 14, verse 18. The simple inherent, inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. What a beautiful picture there. Something mm. that we would all want, this beautiful picture of being crowned with knowledge. That's the prudent person. Proverbs 15, verse 24. The path of life leads upward for the prudent that he may turn away from Sheol beneath. Now that's an intense verse right there. This is saying the difference between life and death mm -hmm. is prudence. It's prudence, yeah. Whether or not you have this characteristic in your life. Mm -hmm. So important. Two more verses, Proverbs 22, verse 3, talks about the idea of prudence. It says, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but mm. the simple go on and suffer for it. Mm. And our actions do have consequences. And even though people don't think that, even though people don't believe that, they do. One more verse on this, and then maybe we'll even just unpack some of the principles in these verses. Proverbs 27, verse 12, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. You might think, wait, didn't you just read that one? Yes, it's the same exact verse as what I just read. It's so nice. Proverbs repeated it twice because clearly <laughs> prudence is very important mm -hmm. for us to develop in our lives. And I love, I found something very interesting as we were preparing for this podcast. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 18, when we get introduced to David, who God himself says is a young man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. And that verse, it says that David was prudent. David, mm -hmm. a young man that God loved and used mightily and greatly. One of the virtues and characteristics that marked his life at a young age was prudence. So clearly the Bible has a lot to say, so yeah. many different verses, but I know you wanted to talk about what it says in Proverbs eleven twenty two. 22 yeah. a little bit. Why don't you reread that and share some of your thoughts on it? Yeah, Proverbs eleven twenty two says, Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. Now, that might not make a lot of sense to us nowadays. Oh, I get it. Yes. But back in this time, putting a gold ring or a woman wearing a gold ring like that was a sign of honor and beauty. Um, it was a great thing to be even given a gold ring like that. And now this is comparing though, if you put this gold ring, this sign of honor, right, in a pig snout, it doesn't make sense, right? Because pigs were not the picture of beauty. No, they were not, right? Um, in the Bible, those are even just like the bottom feeders, right? They were unclean. The worst thing, yeah. Right. Um, and right, there's there's this picture that should make us be like, what? That's 
that's not right. Yep. And it's comparing that to a beautiful woman who lacks discretion, mm. who lacks this prudence, mm. this discretion, this I'm able to think and then even control mm. what I do, what I say, how I act. And here the idea was, it even makes me think of the idea of, of where it talks about how women should have a meekness to them of this idea of this, I have a strength, but it's, I'm able to put it under control. And here instead, it's this beautiful woman who's just flaunting it all, flaunting all the, you know, the beauty. I have no care or self-control over the words that I say, whether it's this lady like leading people on and just like, I can act however I want around people. I have no self-control in my words and actions. And Although she's maybe beautiful, it ends up looking really awful, right? There's no honor there. There's no, no, ends up being no beauty there. It's actually like filthy because it's just not what it ought to be. Whereas a beautiful woman with discretion, there's a sign of honor there. I can have self-control and right, like... I don't have to say whatever comes to my mind. Yeah. I don't have to do whatever I feel. Yeah. I can say no to that. And no, I want to live with prudence and discretion because I I belong to God. I don't yeah. belong to myself. Yeah. And I just think that's that's something to think about, right? Do we think about, right, What? how do I act? What do I say? What? Why does that matter? Do I have real thoughts of, on it? And even another proverb that um, I don't know if you read this one, um, in Proverbs 10, and I think this one's great, Proverbs 10, 19, it says, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Mm. And I love that even in conjunction with Proverbs eleven twenty two, right? Do I, especially, you know, talking about ladies who tend to be known for our many words, right? <laughs> um, we can just talk a lot, right? Um, you know, do I have um, a restraint over mm-hmm. my mouth? That means I'm prudent. Even mm-hmm. there's a prudence when I don't have to say whatever thought comes to my mind. Yep. I don't have to say, you know, whatever I see someone else doing. I don't have to say whatever I feel. And I think when it comes to, you know, what we're talking about, we'd love to see people have real genuine brother sister relationships in Christ. Yep. But when I act like I can just tell, go and tell this guy whatever I think or whatever I feel, there's a lack of wisdom and prudence there that ends up with other people getting hurt. Yeah. That ends up with a lot of the times gossip or yeah. or slander or just feelings being hurt or divisions like you said, when wait, I don't have to say everything that I think or that yeah. I feel or yeah. that I see other people doing or so and so told me this, right? No, I, I wanna restrain my lips and really think hey, if I say this thing, what are the consequences of that? Yeah. What will come? Because that's the idea of prudence, right? There's this real, that practical common sense, right? I take the trouble to stop, to think out what I'm doing and what is the outcome, right? And I think a lot of the times if we do that, if we really have can grow in that prudence to stop, <laughs> think about what I'm about to do and what will come, wow, I actually think we would probably have a lot less to say and not do a lot of the things that we end up doing. Let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that does seem to be the key, is getting myself to a place where I can stop and think in the moment about what I might say and how it would lead to something, or how what I might do, touching someone, or the way that I'm even engaging with them, coming across as flirtatious, even though I wouldn't say that I'm being flirtatious, coming across that way. How, how does someone develop the ability to stop, think, be self-controlled, and really be this prudent, having this kind of discretion? Because it seems like that is the key, right? That everything kind of hinges upon that, the ability totally. to slow down, stop, and think. How does someone develop that in their life? Yeah. I mean, I think that that starts, like you said, not in the moment, right? That's something that has to be developed that I have to grow in. Um, it's going to start, you know, even just in at my time at home, right? In my time that I spend with the Lord, right? When I, when I spend time in the word and in prayer, if I'm really thinking about, um, who I am in Christ, right? That I belong to him. I don't belong to me. So then I don't get to just do whatever I think or whatever I feel, um, 
and even, you know, there's that, that thought of, well, I'm just being myself. When I'm Christ, I'm his. Mm. I don't get to just be myself without a care, mm. right? Um, it, it comes down to, okay, now I need to just think about, right, what, what should relationships look like then um, between, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ? How do I think about that? Because mm. I think a lot of it comes down to not only do I want to think before I act or what I, or when I speak, but I need to have real thoughts about what are those relationships mm-hmm. even there for, right? That brother and sister in Christ, it doesn't mean I get to just be like super comfortable and I'm treating my brothers in Christ, maybe even like I treat my brothers at home, right? My biological family, it's a different thing. Yep. And I have to have real thoughts ahead of time that I develop through studying scripture, yep. you know, and I think Proverbs is a great place to even start doing that. And maybe yeah. I'm, maybe I'm talking to a leader. Hey, how does this work? How do I develop these kind of relationships? How should yep. I even think about that? Because it comes down to how I really think, what are these relationships for that will then determine how I act and yep. how I speak? Well, and I think like this is a sign of immaturity and it's a step of growth that needs to be taken to move in the direction of maturity. Yes. And even as I think about our three kids at home, one of the reasons why I know they are immature, one of the reasons why I know they are kids is because they do whatever they feel like in the moment. Yes, they do. Reality is we got plenty of 16-year-olds that do whatever they feel like in the moment. Totally. And they're acting spiritually childish. Yeah. And they need to grow up. Mm. And I think a part of growing up is learning how to control yourself. Learning how to not say everything that pops in your mind and not do everything that you want to do in the heat of the moment. Yeah, That is a mature, grown-up, adult way to act. And it's time for people who are watching this podcast and listening to this episode to start acting in that kind of a way. Totally. I mean, let's kind of wrap it up with this. What do you think are a few practical steps, just real simply, that someone could take to start moving in this direction? I think one, one thought that's helpful to kind of even set that up is although prudence and discretion are actions that someone takes, decisions that someone makes, prudence and discretion really are more about who someone is 100%. than what they do. So how does someone start becoming this kind of a person where they would be described as, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. Man, that person is so prudent, Mm -hmm. so thoughtful, they're so considerate, not just about like others, but about how they behave and how they act. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I think like we keep going back to Proverbs that even it's, it is an action, right? I can be prudent, but it's some, it's a, it describes, it's an adjective that should be, this is who they are. And I think it comes down to like, it's, sh- it's talking about, right. I'm, I'm wanting to seek out wisdom. And if I'm a person that seeks out wisdom, um, maybe I have, you know, somebody that I'm, I'm looking to, right. I know we had a conversation, um, back when we talked to Sarah and, and we even talked about looking to your leaders. And I think that's even a part of growing in prudence and discretion is do I have an example of that, that I can even watch and follow, um, that, that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Right. As well as, you know, am I, am I looking at the word and do I really understand what this means, what it looks like? Um, I think those are some ways. True story for everybody on the podcast. <laughs> You, Haley, being prudent was the thing that pushed me over the edge in love with her and made me want to marry her someday. So we knew pretty much of each other when we were in high school, but didn't really know each other. I made a decision. This is not Bible verse, but I made a decision when I was in high school that I was not going to date anybody during my time in high school. I just personally did not feel like I was spiritually mature enough or ready. I wanted to focus on my relationship with the Lord. So that was a decision that I had made. And some of my friends in my small group knew about that decision. And so when I graduated, I remember a friend of mine in my small group said, hey, so you 
You've now graduated. Are you starting to think about dating or is there anybody in particular that you could see yourself wanting to be with? And I remember saying to this friend, you were away at college and I was going to be going to master's, which is where you were, but you're older than me and so you were already there. And I said to this friend one night after we were having some in and out hanging out, I said, yeah, I could really see myself someday with someone like Haley at that time, Litz. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I wasn't saying I could see myself with Haley because I thought you were older than me. I never stand a chance getting a girl like her. And uh, we interned together yeah. the summer going into my freshman year at Masters. And so we started to get to know each other better that year. And uh, I always used to joke around with Haley that when I go to Masters, she's going to be like the super cool girl and I'll see her around campus, but yet she'll be like embarrassed or awkward to say hi to me or things like that. And so when I got to Masters, I had no thought of us ever being in a relationship. And so I was just like, just like every time I saw her, I was like, Haley, hey, it's me. Kind of just like joking around. But I remember one of the RAs in my hall very first week of school, asking me, hey, do you know anybody here at Masters? Or do you feel like you don't know anybody and you need to get to know some people? And I said, oh, I know some people who came here from my church. I know this girl named Haley Litz. And he started kind of almost like laughing and chuckling. And I was like, what's, what's so funny? And he was like, oh, Haley, you know, there's so many guys at this girl that, at this school that like her. So many guys have asked her out and she has said very clearly no to so many guys, that was kind of almost like the reputation that like she had had. And I remember when I heard that, I was like, I like that. She's very clear on who she is, what she's doing, and what she's all about. And that was the thing that made me think, man, if God, if that's your will, I would want to be with somebody like that. It was the prudence. It was the discretion. So you probably hate the fact that I'm telling this story right now and talking about you. <laughs> a little bit. But I think that's such a great example to share with everybody on the podcast that uh, you are not a beautiful woman without discretion. You are a beautiful woman with discretion. Anything else you want to say? I just, I, I think one last thing. I like the word that you use of like, being clear. I think that's a huge part of having prudence is I'm able to think clearly. So I, I'm not just going about my day doing whatever, but I have real thoughts about why what I do matters, what relationships between um, men and women should look like. And therefore I'm going to have real clear thoughts in how I act and what I say mm. that then gives clear thoughts to everybody else around me. There's mm. no confusion um, you know, and when I'm interacting with somebody, they're not thinking, maybe they like me. Do they like me? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no confusion going on, on even people on the outside being like, what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Right. There's, there's just real clarity yeah. in what's going on, whether, you know, it is like you clearly like this person yep. and there's real clarity there or we're, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. This is we're we're friends, right? Yep. Is there, is there real clarity because I have real thoughts and I think ahead of time, and then I implement that because I want to honor the Lord. I belong to Him, yep. and that dictates all that I do, yeah. not just the whim of the moment or how I feel, et cetera. Yep. All right, United. Well, hey, we love you so much. We're going to wrap this episode up, and this is the episode where if you're in the chat, you can comment, and you will get entered into a giveaway for the chance to win The Gospel According to God by John MacArthur. Or if you're not watching it live on the premiere, but you're watching it later, you could actually leave a comment on this video up until Friday before the weekend service, and we will also include you in the giveaway for an opportunity to win that book. So thanks so much for watching this episode. It's been super fun having Haley talk about these two things with us here today and we love you we'll see you next week for another episode of the united summer podcast